Here's T-Bone and Heather on Star 98.3 and 97.7 The Bay. Oh, not just us. Here's Johnny. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Friday. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning, John. How are you? Oh, fantastic. Hey, John, I have a trivia question for you. Are you ready? (laughs) Sure. Okay. Who is the father of Ray Dong Chong? Aha. Tommy Chong, yeah, apparently. That's right. right. You right. know, it, it, once I saw it, I was like, that makes a lot of sense. But, I mean, she was somebody in, like, number one, she has a very interesting name. So, mm-hmm. as a kid, I'm like, Ray Dong Chong. That's yeah. super cool. Right, right, right. But she showed up in, like, Commando and, like, every Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, she was or, rolling there for a while. Yeah, she was in everything. And then she was also in Tales from the Dark Side, my favorite uh, vignette from that anthology you, is where she she's a gargoyle that turns into a lady. Um, <laughs> so that's that's a good one too. But yeah, I, I had yesterday no clue. John said, "Hey, I'm just realizing that Ray Don Chong <laughs> is Tommy Chong's daughter." Yeah. I'm like, "How old are you?" I well, mean, I, seriously. To be fair, I thought she was African American, and Tommy Chong's not. So that didn't make much sense to me. Just I think I think her mom is African American. <clears throat> Tommy yeah. Chong, uh, yeah, I think well, her I'm mother is. I'm highlighting my stupidity now, but still, her mother is <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just, I never, because I, I mean, I guess I haven't seen her. In, it's not like she's been in the uh, no, red she carpet disappeared. Recently. Yeah, yeah. So, so, she had that little run in the '80s, yeah, where she was apparently in everything, right? And then done. Yeah, and I kind of God bless her for it. Exactly. That's what I would want to do. Yeah. Exactly. I'm in ten films. See ya. You get that ranch paid for in Montana, and you That's disappear. It. Kind yeah. of like uh, what's her name, um, Fonda. What the young Bridget Fonda? Bridget Fonda is that who it was? She uh-huh. was in all that kinds. Poor thing. She's unrecognizable now. I just I didn't couldn't I believe know. it was her. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah. She's totally changed. But, but I mean, she she's seems older. happy though. She does. She seems seem like happy. she. In, yeah, that's the other thing. It's like she's normal older. She's fifty five or whatever. Right. In human years, not in Hollywood years. I think that there are some people that. The look, I, I don't think we're speaking out of school here. The insanity that is Hollywood. Mm-hmm. I think there are some people who, at some point, go, "I I can't be part of this." No, I'm it's out. like when you yeah. go to a really weird party, right? And it starts off fine, but then so it just kind of takes a turn halfway through. Eyes wide shut, masks yeah, and whatever. craziness. You know, yeah. I mean, whatever your def- I don't think that's weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about weird party, Heather. Um, and then about halfway through, you're like, okay, I've, re- my, I've reached my comfort level, and I think it's time for me to go time home. To go yeah, get the it's, car. it's like when you first get to college. You're going to have, have the frat guy that, that's going to parties and showing up to everything until his senior year plus two. Yeah. But you also have a, most of the people that during uh, rush week or their, their first year at college, they'll go to a lot of parties and they're like, you know, this is exhausting and also not beneficial at all. So I'm not yeah. going to do this anymore. Right. And right. that's the difference between like a Lindsay Lohan and, and like, you know, somebody that's still working. Right. So right. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Right. So uh, you, that brings us about to movies. Yeah. Have you seen Trap? I can't figure out the preview. Yeah, so I, I can't figure out M. Night is Shyamalan. Is Josh Hart, is he a bad guy? Is he a good guy? Or we're just left to, with M. Night Shyamalan. We just, Shyamalan and Ding have, Dong. You we have just to wait, wait till the end. Shyamalan Ding Dong. That's what they <laughs> say. Okay, did you yeah, watch I, it? Yeah, I'm not touching the answer to that one. Um, but okay. yes, um, and I, I just, I don't understand M. Night, it, you know, his twist endings is what he's known for. But nowadays, the big twist is whether or not the movie's going to be good. Because mm. he... You know, he had six cents and signs. He was flying so high, and then he kind of crashed. And, and, like, I've always enjoyed his movies. He's like The Village. You yeah, know? me mm-hmm. too. E- even if it's an easier twist, because honestly, it makes me feel a little smart to guess the twist earlier. Yeah, I like right, that feeling. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it, his quality went down, and then he started to have a comeback with, like, Glass and, and um, Unbroken. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, Cabin in the Woods, even. Or was, yep. it, was it Knock at the Cabin? Knock, Knock on the, the Cabin Door. Knock on yeah. the Cabin um, Door. But he seems to be in this, this area where every other movie is good. Um, and, and it seems to be when he's leaning too heavily into the twist. Mm-hmm. Like, if you write the movie around the twist, yeah, which you it's... can tell they did in this, because essentially the story, just so everybody knows, is Josh Hartnett takes his daughter, his teenage daughter, to a concert. And as they're at the concert, it's a very sweet father-daughter situation. Um, and then he goes out to get a concession at some point or whatever and notices there's a lot of cops outside. And now he notices that they're shutting down the um, exits and entrances. And essentially, there's a serial killer on the loose in this town. 
and they know the serial killer is going to be at this concert, so the cops are locking everybody in so I they can think I know sort the twist. through. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, but you know, there, there's a lot of neat ways you can do that twist. Um, and I, I don't know if it's it was just too obvious, or I don't know if it just. Honest, to be honest with you, don't it felt tell like, us the twist. I, I won't. Oh, you um, know what it is. It, it just, yeah, we know what it, it is. It felt like they built the movie around the idea or the twist, which okay. you know it can work, but not I usually. Think, I think that there's a lot that you know. Well, it's what it, what it is. They do the maze backwards. Okay, so they start at the end point and mm-hmm. work back to the beginning. Right. And I think with him, a lot of times he does that. He starts with, and then Ta-da! what if? Yeah. What if the whole time the dog could talk? Build a movie around it. Yeah, I mean, Sixth Sense was such a big jaw-dropping twist that unfortunately this guy who's a great visual and and intelligent filmmaker decided that oh that's my thing that's I, i'm my a twist thing. guy i'm hitchcock you know exactly. right um, right right and if he hadn't done that if you don't put, put your bang yourself into a specific position you can do a lot more but i thought unbreakable was good and i thought that that but it whole was thing good. where they it carried over into um glass yeah Mr. Glass. glass and then the weird guy that lives with the, all the personalities yeah, split, yeah. split yeah. i mean right. split if anybody didn't think james mcavoy was a quality actor if you thought he was just some british heartthrob and you see split and it's almost he's so good in it that you almost don't realize he's putting on a master class in acting but this guy yeah. goes from being a a, a um ferocious like man manimal to being some like like uh, british school mom in like <laughs> right. three seconds <laughs> right without hesitation and it's right. believable and it's crazy um yeah. But yeah um so yeah trap is i, I think if you're an m night completist you, you'll find things to enjoy about it but for most people it's gonna be a lesser m night Shyamalan. okay gotcha we're sitting here in august uh mm-hmm. we got a few months left uh in this year what what is happening between now and Christmas. My God, yeah. 2025. Well, so um, this week still we have Harold and the Purple Crayon as well coming out. So oh, that's God. more of a kid. I love that. Yeah. Harold, it's, the... And it's a great family kids movie. Oh, it's not good. a great movie. Um, you know, poor um, Zachary Levi, who I love. Uh, he was on the show Chuck. He, he plays Harold in this. He's he's like a lesser Ryan Reynolds, John Krasinski, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Shazam. So, where they do movies like If, he does movies like this. Mm-hmm. When they do Deadpool, he does Shazam, you know. Uh, but the guy's great. And um, and it's it's one of those movies that's just, it, it always feels like an 80s family movie as opposed to a 2000s or, or further. Because at some point they decided family movies couldn't just be sweet and happy and fun. They had to be dramatic pieces yeah, as well. Um, right. And appreciable by everybody. And and this isn't that, but this is a good, fun family movie to oh, close good. out the summer. Oh, good. Good. Um, but yeah, there's, there's you know, we're halfway through the year. Um, and honestly, I kept looking at the list of films coming out. And I was like, it doesn't seem like there's a lot. And, um, okay. you know, that's why I like doing these best of what's left list, because it reminds me of what's out there, number one. But number two, um, you know, it can really help to plan where you're going to spend those theater dollars. Yeah, right. Um, so next week, actually, uh, coming up, we have Alien Romulus, which... Oh, okay. everybody's talking about Fetty that. Fetty Alvarez, who did uh, the Evil Dead remake, uh, and he's he did Don't Breathe. He is, like, one of the names in horror, mm-hmm. especially, like, suspense horror. So this is, like, a one of those matches made in heaven. Uh, and everything we've seen in the trailers looks like it's going to be a real throwback to Alien and Aliens. Okay, yeah. good. Scary. Good, good. Uh, August 23rd, we close out the summer with The Crow, um, which oh. is just getting <sighs> trounced upon by everybody. But Really? I, I'm still holding out hope. I, I don't think this is going to be a great movie. I think it's going to... But you know what? People are precious about the original Crow because Brandon Lee died in it. And all respect to him, he was amazing in it, but... It was just an okay uh, yeah, movie too. It was too. a movie. I mean, I loved it, but it's it was just a regular old action movie. So right. one of those mo- it's one of those characters that I don't know what it is. They always seem to miss the target when they're trying to do these movies. Yeah. And I don't know why because it's a great character. Yeah, it well, it really is. And and you know, this this one especially, this The Crow has been in continuous development since that first movie came out in 1993. Four, wow. wherever it was. Um, you know, everybody from uh, Ed- Edward Furlong has played the, the Crow, um, all the way up to Jason Momoa was supposed to be playing him last. Okay. Yeah, and now we have uh, Baby Skarsgård, um, who played Pennywise, the clown in it, playing right. the Crow. Mm. And it is it promises to be hyper-violent, kinetic, super fun um, action mm. movie. So I'm, I'm okay. looking forward to that one. And then um, September 6th, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, probably okay. oh, one, of, one of the I'm in. three biggest ones of the year. I 
I'm cautiously optimistic. Um, I did notice in the last trailer there was a lot of Beetlejuice, which seems like what you'd want. But if you think back to the original movie, there wasn't a lot of Beetlejuice. It was like ten percent Beetlejuice. No, he was and, the salt in the movie. Yeah, he was the salt in the movie, and I, I feel like they might be oversalting this just mm. because mm, you know mistake. we have a tendency in nostalgia to highlight the wrong things to, yeah. to remember what made it good as not what it actually was. Michael so. Keaton makes everything better, and I just watched his Knox Goes Away on Max. Mm-hmm. Incredible movie. I loved it. I thought yeah. it was so well done, and um, it's just really, really good. I mean, he's, it, I mean, and I won't doubt him. I mean, the guy's been doubted his entire career. Which I don't understand. I don't get it either. I love Michael Keaton. Well, I get the Batman thing because if you saw, you know, Mr. Mom was what he did before that, but everybody, you know, I, no, I don't even remember because I was six years old when this happened, but, you know, we talk about how uh, superhero casting gets gets pooped on today but when michael keaton was cast as batman they almost burned hollywood to the ground yeah right, mr yeah. mom coming in as the dark knight um and he came out and he knocked it out of the park and he's done that repeatedly since yeah. i don't think there's anything that he can't pull off no comedy action drama yeah. whatever it is he's fantastic he's in so it. Yeah. good he I really mean, is if, if he came on stage and sang a show tune while dancing and then left into an alley and did a scene where he shot people, it would be no less believable <laughs> right. than the other one. But Knox, would, watch that movie. Knox yeah. goes away if anybody wants to stream this weekend. It's excellent. It yeah. is good. Uh, Speak No Evil is another coming out. That's that's a, a remake of a Dutch movie. Super, super, super creepy and, and horrifying mm-hmm. movie. I'm out. Yep. Um, uh, October 4th, Joker, Foil Adieu. I have oh. no idea what to think of this. I, I, I have no interest in a Joker musical with... Yeah. Who's it's gonna be um, that's a Harley Quinn. Who? A uh, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. That's right. Yeah. That's right. They got her to be. And look, I liked the first one, but it it almost felt like the first one, the first Joker, was so good because it was so different. We were mm-hmm. need we were Avengers Endgame in comic book movies, and then you have this thing that comes out and says, "Well, here, let me give you a palette cleanser for comic book movies. This is totally different." There's yeah. no mm-hmm. capes. You know, this is messed up and watch it. But I, you know, once again, I think Hollywood got the wrong idea. I. I would be very surprised if this does as well as the next one, especially because it's a musical and people oh. aren't expecting that. Okay, mm-hmm. good um, to know. <laughs> Terrifier 3, Terrifier's uh, Art the Clown. He's like one of the biggest slashers to come to the uh, silver screen in the last 10 years. That comes out in October. November 22nd, I wanted to get y'all's take on this. Gladiator 2. Okay. Mm. I'm nervous about it. But it looks so good in the trailers. Okay, well, if they do it right, 100% I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. But Mel- Gladiator was so iconic. Men I know. I mean, fighting? Yeah, yeah I'm in. right, of course. Right. Yeah. Um, Father, two emoted son, husband, two emoted wife. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on. I mean, the next. it's yeah. just the best. Yeah, it is. It is. And But you got Pedro Pascal in, in that full on Gladiator armor. I, what I've learned is Gladiator is an amazing movie, but any movie can be amazing if you slap a bunch of Gladiators in it. Right. So, right that's very right. true. And Pedro is great. Yeah. Oh, he's amazing. Uh, November 27th, Moana 2, which is kind of sneaking oh, up out of nowhere. Yeah. Cool. yeah we, we had Moana oh, was. Everybody's going to love that. Well, my daughter was three. Uh, she was Moana for like a year. So. Right. <laughs> December <laughs> right. 13th, Craven the Hunter, which uh, we've all probably oh. forgot about. It's one of the last Sony Spider Man universe Who movies. Who plays Craven the Hunter? Um, the guy that played Kick Ass and why oh, I don't remember his name. He's going to be the next James Bond. He's the yeah, next yeah, James, James Bond. Bond. Yeah, that I guy. Forget Johnson. Yeah, jo- and he is something. he is a yoked human being in this movie. He is yeah, a gigantic man. Yeah. Um, and it, the movie actually looks really, really good. Craven the Hunter is a cool character. He's a uh, a master hunter in like the African wilderness and yeah. and like he's really honestly probably bad taste these days he's more like a, an old school english colonizer in right. today's world um uh love so, it <laughs> and any and, and then spider-man is the greatest um hunt so he goes to hunt him but oh uh december 20th we've got two more mufasa um oh, i don't know wow. how i feel about that either and then december 25th nosferatu the it took They're doing 100 a vampire years vampire movie at christmas Yes, because Hollywood hates Jesus. I'm telling you, what is going <laughs> that on? Is crazy. I don't know. Who's going to go to and that? And Willem Dafoe's in that. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. He was also in Shadow of the Vampire. Because back when in the you 90s, think yeah. Christmas, you immediately think <laughs> Willem, Willem Dafoe. Just his big smiley face coming down your chimney. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my <gosh>. kids. <laughs> kids. <laughs> That's so. wrong. Yeah, it, it. I. You know, I've. I've always thought they should remake Nosferatu. It's a hundred years old now, and, and yeah, I. I'm fine with it coming out in it's October. Cool. It's. You know, that is a weird thing though. Like I remember, like Alien vs Predator Requiem came out on Christmas Day. They, there's always. Uh, there's. You no, know, it's not. Both every year, it's either a feel good happy movie like uh, you know a, a Hallmark movie on the big mm-hmm. screen or 
Nosferatu on mm-hmm. Christmas. Pay attention. Look, go look back at the box office in recent years. You'll see. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, uh, John. Okay, Appreciate so it. That's what we got until uh, till the end of the year. So uh, if, if there's even a planet around. So that would be great. <laughs> okay.